Amen. Come on. We get our rules and our regulations. Amen. They got denominations. If you ain't got a card with their group, you can't preach in their church, and they don't want you fellowshipping nobody else either. But brother, I do not believe, amen, that just because somebody don't can't go to Otter Creek Church where I go to church, or just because they don't go to this church, they ought to sit back and hold back the truth from them. Brother, I want to fellowship everybody. I want to tell everybody about Jesus. If I got the truth, I want the whole world to know it. I wish somebody would magnify God the night and praise Him. If you got the truth, amen, spread it. It's more important to spread it than it is to keep it. Somebody say amen. I believe that. You don't know why? Because, brother, if God, if all God wanted us to do was to get the truth and to keep it, he'd have took us up to glory after we got saved. He'd have told us to go to a monastery. But thank God there's a world out there that's lost and it's dying. And the only one that can bring the truth to them is them that's got the truth. It's you and I tonight. Why don't you raise your hands and magnify God and praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. The world's dying. It's lost. And the world, the government, they look at this, you know what they think? It's impossible. Or somebody say that, they're talking about the war on drugs. They said we're fighting a losing battle. I know people in government that are backing these things. Then they used to fund it, they said we're fighting a losing battle. What is it that's going to bring us out of this? Amen. One day this world will be destroyed. That's, that's, that's the Bible. That's, that's, that's going to have to happen. Amen. But what a call for souls to come in. When the people of God come this right here. Raise your hand up to Jesus. What to keep you in the midst of the storm when you walk on the Word. Aren't you glad that God laid a carpet out under your feet? A carpet of the Word. Turn with me quickly. I need to hurry. So God is calling us out on the waters of impossibility. We can walk on it, brother, if we're walking on the Word. That's what had to transpire before Peter stepped in that water. His feet weren't just laying on water. His feet was on the Word of God. And even when he slipped off, Jesus grabbed him by the hand and said, Oh, that little faith, what you down? He's telling, he said, wherefore did you doubt? And I asked, why did you doubt? He said, you didn't have to doubt. The word was with you. Peter walked back to the boat. Somebody say, hey, man, he just, all you got to do is get back on the word. John, 11th chapter. So firstly, Jesus is calling us out upon the waters of impossibility. Now, these are calls that are coming to the church. It's coming to individuals tonight. But it's coming to the church. I'm preaching to the church as a whole for right now, anyhow. John 11. 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. This call, God did not mean for you to hear as a church. Somebody say amen. God did not mean for the church to hear this call. And this is a call from death. God didn't mean for you to hear a call from death except for one time. It's when you was born in sin and born in death. And when he called you from there, brother, when you become a saint of God, when you was born again, you're never supposed to hear that call again. But today, the church, those that have been born again, those that are filled with the Holy Ghost, supposedly, those of us that are coming to church every Sunday and Wednesday night or Tuesday night in this case, amen, those of us that are faithful, those that still read the Bible and pray, God is having to call his church out of death in 1990. Somebody say amen. You say, brother, I don't believe the church is dead. Let me tell you something. Like I said last night, amen, I don't believe it's totally dead because God's always had a remnant. But brother, we're on a respirator. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, you say, why are you saying that? I just told you why. Amen. Well, for what purpose was the Son of God manifested? To destroy the works of the devil. Brother, then the sons of God, the church of the living God, was manifested for the same reason. We were manifested, sister, to destroy the works of the devil. Why is it then, amen, that the devil's works are getting greater every day? I mean, drugs, amen, getting worse. Amen, AIDS getting bigger. Amen, filth and corruption getting greater. Not just in the world anymore, but right in church. Amen, people are beginning, amen, to get deeper and deeper and closer, amen, to see into the world. Why? Because the church, amen, if it's not dead, it might as well be. It's not affecting people like it used to. You know I'm telling the truth. Amen. You know I'm telling the truth. And I'm not preaching something to push us down. We're going to be resurrected in a few minutes. Somebody say amen. Amen. We sat back. Amen. We've been satisfied with just the experience of religion. People are dying every day. You say, brother, how come you don't think that God meant for us to hear this call? I didn't know I was going to read a while ago. When I read that about the Holy Ghost, the Lord put that on me. I read the scripture. I usually quote right here. Jesus Christ, when he was born, was not born like we were. How are we born? 
born in sin. We were born dead. Somebody say, man, we were born dead, brother. I mean, yeah, we breathe good, clean oxygen. Come out bleeding good red blood. But yeah, we were dead in the spirit. Amen, we didn't have any kind of ways like God. We were nothing like God. Let me tell you what you are when you're born. Amen. When any man or woman that's born on this earth, they got the potential to be anything that sin has to offer. You hear me? Amen. You're a potential murderer when you're born. You understand what I'm saying? You're a potential homosexual. You're a potential whoremonger. You're a potential thief. You're a potential rapist. You're a potential gambler. Hello, church. I'm telling you the truth tonight. Amen. You got the potential to be the greatest dictator that ever lived on this earth. Look at Ted Bundy. Anybody now say Ted Bundy? You don't know who he is. He was down in Florida, a, a maniac. Amen. Killed. I forget how many people. One time he was a little baby and they were sticking him under the chin saying he killed One time, Adolf Hitler was a little child. They probably said, look at this little bundle of innocence. One day didn't know he'd kill millions of Jews. He was born with that nature. He was born dead, never met Jesus. But God, what would we be tonight if we'd never met him? Raise up your hands and love God. Come on, some of you walked down the path of sin before. You knew partly what you'd be. I know, fellas, amen, they, they used to wrestle grizzly bears. Amen. They used to go to them bar rooms like one preacher told me. Said we're after at closing time when everybody left, they swept up eyeballs and teeth when they got through. Somebody say amen. That's the kind of people that some of us were. Amen. I thank God I never got in that rough of a situation in my life. Amen. But I know people today, amen, they were in rough places like that. Amen. But before they met Jesus and they was on their road, they could have wound up killing somebody. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Come on, I have a friend of mine. He's my age. Amen. The last thing he did, amen, before he got saved, he got drunk one night. He's a preacher's kid. He got drunk one night. Was driving down the highway, so drunk, amen, at 17 years old, amen, back around the last part, matter of fact, Christmas time of 1984, he got saved in January. Right in there, might have been, matter of fact, might have been January, it's already January of 1985. He was driving down the road, so drunk, amen, he run a car off the road, amen, had a man and his wife and a bunch of their little kids in, run them off the road, like they've killed them. And he felt just thinking bad about it, he's a tender hearted guy. He said, Lord, I promise if you get me home, I'll give my life to you. Why? Because, but let me tell you something. Right there, he could have become a murderer. That close! Had it not been for the grace of God, he could have become a murderer. What would have happened if he'd have kept going on? What would have happened if he'd have kept living in sin? What would have happened to you and I if we'd have kept going on? We could have been any part of that situation. Why? Because we were born with death inside of us. How I many know what the sting of death is? The sting of death is sin. Sin is what makes death. I mean, come on, church. As a matter of fact, we'll never die. You believe that? Oh, yeah, this whole body might lay down. It may not quit breathing, but brother, the part that's awake is just going to keep on going to glory. Once you raise up here, we'll never die! Amen. People see angels coming to escort them. They didn't die. They just kept going. They didn't know no difference. Amen. Because we've been set free from the chains of death, we really didn't born again. So watch. Why is it them people die, brother Joey? They get off the word. They get off the word. Get their eyes on maybe theology. Get their eyes on other things. God only knows. When Jesus was born in this world, he was not born dead. He could have never been a thief. Somebody praise God. He would have never been a murderer. There's no way he could have been. He could have never been a killer, brother. He could have never been a rapist. He could have never been a homosexual. He could have never been a gambler. Why? Because, brother, he was born the spirit of life itself with the spirit that sustained him. Won't you lift up your hearts to God and praise him? Come on, he was born with the Holy Ghost. You hear me? God said he was born with the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit he was born with. Now, there's a bunch of jokers that go around trying to preach amen, that Jesus got the Holy Ghost in the River Jordan. I believe I preached on this last time I was here. Amen. That they try to preach that Jesus got the heart of it. It didn't look like it. It just come like it. Well, the book of Luke said come in a bodily form like a dove. Now, I want you to picture this. They're trying to preach this. Now, the scripture said, John said, that he that sent me said unto me, him you see the spirit descending the pond in a bodily form like a dove and remaining. Now, they take that remaining there and they try to preach remaining as abiding there forever. That's why they say he's got the Holy Ghost. Now, hold on a second. If it come on a bodily form like a dove and live on Jesus and it's going to remain there forever, I don't you get the picture of Captain Crook in your mind with a pirate on his shoulder except it's Jesus with a dove on his. Come on, somebody say amen. If that's the way they're going to preach it, that's the way it is. No, that wasn't what it meant. Amen. What they meant was that thing, even if it remained for five seconds, five minutes, I don't know how long. But brother, he was showing how many know the nature of a dove. 
You can scare that thing off. It just won't come to anybody. Come on, somebody say amen. But brother, he was letting you know, amen, that the Holy Spirit's the same way. It just won't come to anybody. And brother, that thing lit upon him. That dove did. To show John there was something parallel on that on the inside. Why don't you raise up your hand to magnify God? How will the things of God discern tonight? How are the things of God discerned according to the Word? Spiritually. You can't discern this book without the Spirit. One day at 12 years old, this little fellow walked into the temple. I wish somebody praise God now. 12 years old, 28 years before the River Jordan, or 18 years before the River Jordan, never come along. Amen. He walked in there. He sat down with doctors and lawyers. He opened up the Old Testament Scripture or something. These boys have been to Bible school to preach. Somebody say amen. They done been to Bible school. This, here's a 12-year-old boy. I don't even know if he had his bar mitzvah yet. Anybody sat down there. He opened up the Scripture and began to expound the words with them old theologians. They sat back confounded. Come on, you know what the Scripture said? It said he confounded them. Amen. If he didn't have the Holy Ghost, then how did he do that? Brother, he had the Holy Ghost. He was born in life. Amen. That's why. Amen. He was born, amen, to God without the possibilities of being there. He's born alive. Now watch this. Here's my point. After we get in this altar, after we pray through, after we part of the family of God, to show out the way I'm preaching tonight. After we come into this mighty family of God, we become like Him. We're being born after the way that He was born. And I read that scripture a while ago. Jesus said, as He has sent me, so send I you. Now, they's already born after the flesh. He wasn't talking about that because he's born dead. He said, right then, when you get born again, from that point on, He sends you forth like He was sent originally. Amen. Not in death, not in sin, not in flesh. He sends you in life. I wish you'd raise your hands and praise God. So, preacher, what are you trying to say? If He sent us that way, then God never meant for us to hear the call to come forth from death. But yet, somehow, some way, I don't know. I can't explain everything. Somehow, church, we've let our feet slip. Brother Armstrong's been preaching a message lately. He's going to be over at Brother Michael's, I think, next week, Wednesday night, the revival. I mean, maybe he'll preach a message, this message. We preach about how the men of old before us, they forgot to pass something on, Brother Randy. You thought about, we talked about Alan and Branham and Cole. Amen. Them that didn't die backslid. Somebody say amen. They didn't pass something on to us. Elijah passed it to Elisha. Come on. Did you know Moses passed it to Joshua, but Joshua didn't pass it? Come on. It rose a generation that knew not God. That's what I think. Somebody forgot to pass something to us. And now slowly but surely, and when people call them the greatest hour of teaching and of the Word, it's got so much of a wordless people, it's pathetic. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let me tell you about our religious age. I got on that while ago didn't finish. They don't believe in praying anymore. Somebody say amen. They don't believe in fasting anymore. And I'm going to say something, some of you might not like it. Amen. This old fat boy, faith preacher in Tulsa, Oklahoma, don't believe in fasting. Somebody say amen. Amen. I read something said he believed in, in moderation. He said, but it's not that important because Jesus didn't teach on it much. Well, I don't know what Bible he's been reading. Somebody say amen. Remember that God said that Jesus taught on giving, taught on giving and taught on praying, but never taught on fasting. Brother, right there in the same place he taught on fasting. I mean, three of the most important things you can do is giving, fasting, and praying. Somebody say amen. Matter of fact, I nearly believe, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he preached on fasting before he preached on giving. Amen. And he didn't say if you fast, he said when you fast. Somebody say amen. He give us guidelines. But what is it? They don't want to sacrifice anymore. They don't want to pay a price anymore. They want to hear some kind of watered down false doctrine that they call faith. Amen. They don't want to believe God anymore. They don't want to pay a price. Amen. We talked about the perverted translation of the Bible. Amen. I read a few um, uh, last year sometime. Amen. That said, talking about casting out devils, said this kind goes not out but much prayer and fasting. I read one or two of them that said this kind goes not out but by prayer alone. Take away the sacrifice. Church, religion is dead in America. I mean, reach down for the poets. You might feel a bump here and there because there's still people doing things for God. Don't get me wrong. What's it going to take? What's hindering people, Brother Joey? Watch this. I'm going to try to hurry. Help me, Jesus. Here was Lazarus laying in the tomb representing the church. He's in the tomb. A stone rolled over the face of it. Now here comes the Lord coming. He walks up there. Now watch. Here's what the preacher does. Here's what the Word does. Roll away the stone, he said. Now watch. First of all, Jesus rolls away the stone. Now, 
Did Lazarus do that? Really, he couldn't have. He was dead. The church can't roll away the stone tonight. Jesus did the next thing. It was the hardest part. Spoke the word and put life back in his body. Now, here's the church. We land there in the tomb. Amen. Jesus has rolled away the stone. When we preach this word of God to you, that's what the word does. It rolls the, the stone away from your eyes, away from your heart. Amen. Off of your spirit so you can see the word of God. You believe that? Amen. Then have you, Now, here's what we've done. Every one of us have done this before. We've sat in services. Preacher, get up there and preach a powerful word from God. The stone way to roll from the door of our heart. Amen. And I mean that word puts life in us. It's charges. And we sat there. I've done it before. And said, well, bless God. Amen. I'm going to do more for God than I've ever done before. I'm going to go, witness tomorrow. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm going to go on a 15-day fast. I'm going to pray more. Come on. Have you ever done that? You get so excited. Amen. The stone been rolled away. The word been put in your heart. But you go home and you let it die. Why? You know what most people do? This is an excuse that Lazarus could have used. Here's Lazarus, bound in grave clothes, laying down. Lord, I wouldn't get up and walk out, but I'm bound in grave clothes. I feel the life in me. I'm, I can still breathe, Lord. And I know you rolled away the stone, but do you think you could send somebody here and roll these grave clothes off of me? Now Jesus done done all the work. Here's our excuse. These old grave clothes... Lord, this is a body of death. I'm a prisoner in this flesh. Lord, if I, if I just want flesh, I can do all right. Come on, if you want flesh, you can help nobody either. Somebody say amen. He's rolled away the stone. He's done the hardest part. He spoke to life. You know what Lazarus did, brother? My God, I feel the faith of him coming up in my heart tonight. I mean, he didn't sit there and start complaining and belly and trying to get Mary and Mark to come undo him. Brother, he was excited because life had come back in him. He was dead, brother. Come on, somebody hear me. He was dead. He laid there for four days and four nights. Amen. Until he finally got tired of laying there. And next thing you hear, you hear. They have just some tiptoes hitting that sand. That brother started hopping his way out that door. Amen. Come on, here's what Jesus would do for you. If the church would do that, I would say, Lord, I know I'm but flesh. God, I know my frame. I know I come from the dust of the earth. But Lord, you rolled away the snow for a reason. You put life in me for a reason. I'm going to come out like I am and let the chips fall where they may. Somebody say amen. But brother, if you get out of the tomb, hear me. I said, if you get out of the tomb, amen, with that life in you, if you walk outside the door, then the word of God will come down and say, loose him. Loose him, loose him, and let him go. I mean, want you raise up your hand and say, "God, put life back in me. Roll away the stone." God's calling the church forth from death. 